Hello YouTube, so I'll be making an overview of the must-have applications for uh, for any new Mac or MacBook Air or MacBook Pro user. So this will be a redo over my old video because I was going really fast and some people complained about that. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and review things more in depth in this tutorial. So let's just begin by very simply seeing uh, must-have web browsers. This would include Google Chrome, which would be a, a replacement over Safari. However, Safari is very nice and smooth, so that's not really necessary. But Google Chrome has several different uh, additional modifications. Additionally, some might prefer Firefox. It depends on the person itself. Next up, another must-have application would be uh, ScreenFlow. So ScreenFlow is the application I use for screen recording. It allows you to edit afterwards a video. It also allows you to make recordings and very simple animations. You have different color options, including modifying the voice. It said rest is basically its own mini iMovie within itself. It's very powerful software. It costs one hundred dollars on the App Store, and it's just very easy to use. You have this here. It tells you how long you've been recording for, pause, desktop icons, etc. My next must-have application would be Pages. So Pages is basically the equivalent of Microsoft Word, but it gives you several different templates. It's Retina optimized, and it is a lot cheaper. So let's say I want to make like a brochure of a daycare. You choose the brochure. And here's the interface. Now this is the older version because I prefer the older version over the new one because the new one basically removes some of the features. Hence why you might have a two star review on um, on the Mac App Store. Okay. Now you have the options to export as PDF, Word, RTF, ePublication, etc., etc. You cannot, you can export it as a document file if you guys were wondering. Similarly, Keynote is the alternative to Microsoft PowerPoint, as you can see here. A new version is available. The new version is similar to this one, but it's more significantly easier to use. But at the same time, they remove some features. So really, I don't see why to upgrade. So yeah, it's not worth it. Uh, another alternative would be um, Numbers, which is also similar to Excel from from um, from Microsoft. So again, you can export this as an Excel file, PDF, what have you, Excel PDF, CSV. So yeah, these are powerful pieces of software. The next application I really recommend for any user would be Pixelmator, especially if you're dealing with graphics. Pixelmator is a really, really easy tool. It's essentially similar to Photoshop. So say we have this image. Let's make this larger. It allows you to quickly make drawings with graphics. You can change the effects. Let's say we have this. And then we get a nice title that says, Hello World. Let's make this black. Hello World. And then we can take our background and let's make something like yellowish. There we go. So you can quickly make graphics with this and you can adjust to export it as a Photoshop file. There's really a lot you can do with this. PDF, PNG. And then you can also download more stickers like I did. So then you have different different possibilities, different stickers, and you can modify all of the stickers however you wish. For example, I downloaded a pack of iOS 7 icons, and then I can use all these different icons for different things. For example, I have like a setting thing here. Let's have like a moon. I don't like moons. Let's have um, this shape. Yeah, so it's really, really easy to use, and you can merge all the layers and change it up. So this is Pixelmator. Pixelmator um, costs $30 in the Mac App Store, and Pages, Keynote, and Numbers all cost, I believe it was $15, and it's $10 on iOS. Continuing on, this is a must-have for any coding user. Essentially, this, this allows you to... Um, wait... This program essentially allows you to make a very simple program using 
almost any programming language. It's very easy to use. It's a very nice, clean interface. I find there are some problems, for example, with this code indentation. It's very annoying as code indentation does not always work perfectly. But it's very nice for simple projects. I use it, for example, for some of my games. So if I open this like a very simple Pong game, then I made this this morning. So you can make simple games with it, I guess. It's not the most powerful environment, but yeah, I guess it's still very powerful for learning simple languages. So it comes with the ability to use C, C Sharp, C++, Java, and you can import your own languages like I imported C Sharp. Alright, so that's a code runner. Another easy to use ID, and I mostly use this for school, but it would be Dr. Java. Dr. Java gives you the ability to Java doc documents through this. Now, what is annoying about this is that whenever you want to run, you have to press compile and then run. But it gives you the ability to use Java doc. It's not really a useful thing if you have Eclipse, which is much better for programmers. Let's head over to my applications, and let's see what else I have in here. So coconut battery is a must have. It essentially provides an overview of your battery health. So you can see here my battery health is at 85%, which is very, very low. 89%, sorry. But I charge my, my laptop 270 times. So that's a lot. And then it tells you your temperature, load cycles, the age of my Mac. So my Mac's 18 months old. You can say happy birthday once it's 24. And then it tells you the battery usage. So that's Coconut Battery, which is a free application. Next up, and I really recommend this, is GFX card status. You can manually change whichever graphics card you're using. So you have a MacBook Pro Retina, you can change it to discrete or integrated graphics. So integrated graphics would save battery life, and then discrete graphics would give you more performance. Right now, since I'm recording ScreenFlow, I want as much performance as possible. So I'm going to use the discrete graphics card. Let's just keep it on dynamic switching because it's generally accurate. But this way you have some control over what your Mac is using. Um, another application I'd recommend, now this isn't very useful, but CPU LED. just tells you if your, LED, if your CPU is being used. And then you can change the different icon sets and temperature scale. Another must-have application would certainly be free memory. I reviewed this on my channel several times. It essentially frees all the inactive memory. Now it's going to save quite a bit of memory. So you can see here on this chart how much memory is being used. You can see here app memory is a lot. And now it's changing. Compressed. And now you can see how much space there's left. You have all of this free space. Now there's 5.6 gigs free, and with my memory diagnostic app, we can tell how much space there is free. So this application actually works, it's free from the Mac App Store, and GFX card status is free from the internet. Continuing on, um, let's see, Blackmagic disk speed test is just a benchmark, it tells you how fast your disk speed is, it generally varies with read and write, it feels like my Mac got slower for some reason. I'm quite sure why, but I guess it's from the decay of the solid state drive. So yeah, these are my Mac performance SSD. And let's continue on. Back to my apps. Uh, if you have an Android, you'd want Android file transfer. So you can transfer your files from your Samsung or HTC, whatever you have. Clear Day is a nice application. It tells me the weather using a nice interface. And then I would always have the weather up here, which tells me in Toronto, oh look, there's haze today. And it quickly tells you all the information, even when you close this big app. So it's always up there for me to know if I'm going outside, what temperature is it, and do I need a jacket or whatnot. Another application I use a lot is Parallels Desktop. Now this depends if you're actually going to use it. This is a pretty expensive software. Essentially, it allows you to... um. Uh, to run different virtual machines. So here we see I only have Windows XP because I took out the other ones. And so I don't use them, but I have them on a flash drive. So I can just open them up from a flash drive. 
this allows me to run video games from Windows XP. I can customize how much RAM it's using. This is really my alternative to boot camp because I don't really have the time to switch over to boot camp every day. So this is really fast, turns on fast. And then you can see here I just have some Visual Basic, Visual Studio, Google Chrome, etc. And then you can make this into a smaller window. Virtual machine. Uh, exit full screen. And now I can have this side by side with something else. Just have this like that. And then I can have it beside my computer. Alright. So that's Parallels Desktop. An alternative to that would be VMware Fusion. Um, next up would be Self Control. Self Control allows me to control myself. So I can block, um, I can pretty much block any website except these for one hour. So let's try to do it for 15 minutes. You enter in your password. And then for 15 minutes, you won't be able to access anything. Okay, so next up, Google Earth is just an overview. It's like Google Maps, basically. Continuing on, this is a free memory application. Monolingual saves a bunch of space by removing languages you don't really use. So let's see, I don't really use Croatian, Czech, Dutch, Danish. I, I do use English from Canada, so I do use that, but I don't speak Finnish. No Greek, no Hebrew, no, ah, uh, maybe Hungarian. Um, yeah, so once you select the languages that you don't use, you just click remove, continue. And then now it's removing the languages from different applications that you do not commonly use. And this pretty much lets you save space. This is especially useful for Mac users. So, with SSDs. Another one would be AVG Cleaner. AVG Cleaner does the same thing as this doctor. I review those apps on my channel so you can just look around and you'll find them. So yeah, these are pretty much my must-have applications for any new Mac user. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please like this video if you liked it. And comment below your favorite app that you saw in this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed.